Hello dear citizens of the cosmos. I would really like to start my speech by quoting the great genius of mankind Nikola Tesla. When we speak of man, we have a conception of humanity as a whole, and before applying scientific methods to the investigation of his movement we must accept this as a physical fact. But can anyone doubt today that all the millions of individuals and all the innumerable types and characters constitute an entity, a unit? Though free to think and act, we are held together, like the stars in the firmament, with ties inseparable. These ties cannot be seen, but we can feel them. I cut myself in the finger, and it pains me. This finger is a part of me. I see a friend hurt, and it hurts me, too. My friend and I are one. And now I see stricken down an enemy, a lump of matter which, of all the lumps of matter in the universe, I care least for, and it still grieves me. Does this not prove that each of us is only part of a whole? If we pay attention to one rather obvious fact about the universe, then it will become clear to us that everything in the cosmos has its own consistent pattern, structure, and levels of development. Absolutely everything, from galaxies to spermatozoan, is subordinate to these main principles. Since the cosmos itself is devoid of any separateness, everything in it is interdependent, and the cosmos itself is devoid of such human constructions as object, subject, there, here, I, they. It is the shaky human ideas about the existence of a certain personality, which is isolated from other living beings, that led us to what we see around. The conviction that there are a certain, you, a certain, me, and some, they exists only in our heads. If you are not ready to accept this fact about the world in which we live, then I think you should stop reading this text right here and right now. To assert otherwise, ignoring the obvious nature of the reality of all things in the universe, namely its seamlessness, is like trying to prove that the planet Earth is flat. You, as an independent set of psychic objects, symbols, ideas, images, fantasies and ideas from the outside world, do not exist. In fact, there is simply a planet on which there are more than 7 billion living creatures that cannot go beyond the boundaries inside their heads because they are convinced that their versions of the concerted realities are real indeed. All ideas from the separability of skin color, nation, religion, state are the products of the human mind, which has not yet awakened to the truly holistic nature of the world. From Gautama Buddha and Nagarjuna to Ken Wilbur and Sri Aurobindo, from Nikola Tesla and Rarik to Jim Carrey and the Wachowski sisters, the list goes on and on, everyone came to the same thing. You can say anything you want, but the only right strategy that can be adopted so that humanity can prevent its own disappearance is the strategy of compassion because compassion is the highest form of love. We only exist when our presence is constructive in relation to the world around us. We only exist when we realize the interdependence with all living beings. We only exist when we truly love. As a species, we are at the very beginning of our development, and the fact that we have just entered the cosmic scene, and have not even learned how to behave correctly on it, speaks of at least the absence of the world-centric stage of consciousness development in the human race in general. A strategy based on compassion and interaction with each other for the benefit of the interplanetary holistic community will help mankind surpass the illusion of isolation, and thanks to that we will be able to open the doors to higher states of consciousness in which it will appear as the cherished and sought-after space reactor, through which we can work directly with the cosmos, opening the arms of eternity in front of us. Without a holistic consciousness, the human race will never be a strong player in the cosmic scene. In order to reach the world-centric stage, a serious all-sector revolution of human consciousness is needed, which can be achieved by integrated education, integral art, a holistic inter-religious and inter-political dialogue, and an emerald approach to business and the economy. By changing the perception vector from, everything to me, and, everything to us, nation, country, to, everything to us, mankind, we can overcome the terrifying barriers that divide our true unity as a united human republic. The evolution of consciousness will lead to the fact that a person, as a species of homo sapiens, ceases to exist. Along with the gradual extinction of this species, concepts such as me, you, they, nation, state, religion, life, death, magic, good, and evil will disappear as well. The future will be in the hands of a new species of Homo cosmicus, which will exist on a completely different level of consciousness. 
The self-awareness of a new life form, going beyond racial, cultural and historical differences and self-identifications, will be fully matched with the cosmos. That is the birth of cosmic consciousness and multispatial cosmocentrism, by the concept of multidimensionality. I mean the acceptance of the spiritual nature of the cosmos and its intangible dimensions. Homo cosmicus will comprehend the universe as an endless manifestation of holarchy forms of life, possessing only one true nature and one true essence, merging into a single self-consciousness with the cosmos. Under the term, cosmos, I use the concept of Ken Wilbur by which he unites all manifestations of being, including various areas of consciousness. This term is used to separate the non-dual universe, which, according to his point of view, includes both the noetic and physical aspects, from the purely physicalist model of the universe considered by traditional, narrow, sciences. A human being, as any other sentient life form, is a citizen of the cosmos, not just some specific universe, galaxy, solar system, planet, country, village or tribe. It is this which is cosmic consciousness. It is this which is the essence of being. Thank you for your attention. See you again, guests from the future.